spiritual competition this year, right? Wasn't it devoted or Mahargan? Uh, or voted devoted for the the journeys of Saint Paul in a broad lens. Um, so there, these are the three journeys. Um, they're in different locations, and they're different servants, uh, <coughs> and different events that took place um, over the years. Um, just to give a perspective, this is what the church looked like before the journeys. So these areas that contained Christians, and the rest was, this is the Roman Empire. So roughly uh, the regions where the Roman Empire took place. And after the missionary journeys, uh, you, you see a very different picture. Um, actually, I don't have it here. Hold on. <laughs> well, you'll find that most of the area that was mentioned in the Roman Empire had Christians and churches that were developed as a result of the expansion of St. Paul. Um, so you'll see that this is just the first journey. It took 18 months uh, for him to go uh, throughout um, just these few regions. And although it's hard to trace um, within the uh, Book of Acts, so that's why we take it a little bit uh, slowly. So he, they went from uh, Jerusalem up to Seleucia, and then down from Cyprus, as, you, as we'll see, to Derb and Lystra. And then it was here that St. Mark returned back, the famous uh, change in the book of Acts. And we'll see also why in a little bit. Hopefully we'll get to that point. Um, and then he returns uh, to the journey. Um, Uh, so for the first journey, it's mentioned from chapter 13 to the end of 14. It took, uh, as we said, 18 months um, from Syria to Antioch, and mainly Barnabas, uh, St. Barnabas with him, and St. Mark for part of the journey. Um, <coughs> the main objective of this was Antioch and Pisidia. Uh, so you will see this is one of the main centers. And so that's why he, his goal was to go from Antioch to the other Antioch of Pisidia and then return. Um, the other stops, uh, we see that events are there through the whole time. One of the main things is that usually the apostles, when they started, do you know it was their first stop for most of the apostles? The synagogue, that's where St. Paul was first stopped, when they're selecting the city. So when... Um, like God called Abraham and told him to go and uh, to leave his family, he didn't give him an address or a country. So what did Abraham choose to do? He actually told him, God told him, leave your father and your father's house. And so he took everything and he left. But he didn't, he wasn't told where to go. You, you know the story, yes? So what did he, where did he go? He decided to go to Egypt, which was a mistake <laughs> and a few problems uh, that took, but, but anyways, God was directing him. He ended up, as we know, in Israel and established in that area. But when the apostles went out, their first stop was usually their hometown. And they would go, as we will see, that's what St. Mark did. That's what uh, many of the, But St. Paul is an exception. St. Paul did not go to Tarsus in the first time, but uh, he spent most of his time, as we'll see, in Pisidia. Um, uh, this, we'll start with this verse, so in the, the book of Acts, the end of uh, chapter 12. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Now in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. So this is the list. Um, why do I have here fulfilled their ministry? Because they had finished a phase in their service. What was this phase? Is this usually very silent? Uh, <laughs> Or is it because they're recording or deep thought? Or is it just very busy? What's fulfilled their ministry? If it's not the completion of their ministry, 
or else the book of Acts would have ended <laughs> in chapter 12. It's actually the fulfillment of a certain part. If it was servant's prep, we say they finished servant prep, or a certain objective, but they had completed their work. And sometimes you feel this in the service. We said, okay, I finished the work that God had called me to do. And some people say, okay, I'll leave this. No, it was actually God was calling them to a new stage, not only in their service, but in the life of the church. It, so they, they, they realized that there was a fulfillment. God sent us to accomplish certain things, and by His grace, this, these were accomplished. But what comes next is as important. So sometimes we have no uh, feeling of fulfillment. <laughs> That's when there's discouragement in the service, and you're fighting, and you're struggling. But then th there are times, and it's important to identify when there's a fulfillment, because afterwards there is going to be a calling. So um, this was, like I said, a, 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 an important part, but we will see what happens in the next, the next part. They ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. And having fasted and prayed, and laid hand on them, they sent them away, so being sent out by the Holy Spirit. Now, what are the important verbs here? You can read, right? You can see? It's not a trick question. There's several. Fasted and prayed. It's mentioned. Anything else? No keywords? Laid hands on them. This is not the ordination because they were already ordained, but laid hands on them. They were praying for a special calling, a special grace to be given them. Sent out because they are apostles. Apostle means the one who is sent. They're sent by whom? Huh? By the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sending, um, and when we are sent, so w you may be sent by Abuna or by Sayyidina or by a fellow servant. And this is important in our life that we know that we are sent by God through his servants to do certain work. Sometimes if we serve without this feeling of being sent, when we get discouraged, but if I know I'm sent, there's a work I can't leave until <laughs> it is finished. What else? There's a, a couple others. help you <laughs> okay so the first one separated why separated usually the Holy Spirit is gathering and uniting it's interesting here why he wanted the separation what type of separation is this it's very you can guess it's okay especially if you guess right <laughs> you know, uh, it's too obvious. Separating here is a focus because what happened is that there was a general service. That's why they had the fulfillment. fulfillment. They were focused on the Jews, but there was a whole area in the service that they didn't were not addressing. So the Holy Spirit said, okay, okay, very good. Now separate from me, Paul and Barnabas, why? Because there's a special work that they are called to do. Well, what about the rest? What about St. Peter? If you look in the book of Acts, in the beginning, he did go to Cornelius, right? Cornelius was not, but it was with a great struggle. <laughs> and there were some conflicts that took place between St. Peter and Paul. St. Paul was specifically called for the Gentiles in the time before he was baptized it's mentioned right God told him before when he appeared to him in the Damascus road that you are a vessel of mine now you'll be sent for the Gentiles so St. Paul knew from the beginning it wasn't a uh, mystery St. Peter didn't have that call in the same way it's a different so the specialization when I say we are all called for his holiness for his glory all of you are called to the service, but there is a special work that each one of us has. 
the more that we serve, the more specialized our service can become. Not in the sense of like limited to one certain person or group or city or church, but it's in certain area of the service. And it's different for each one of us. That's why when we feel, when we serve, we know that I'm called to do this, to this work. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, being sent out to all of the countries in, ha in the inhabited world, like St. Paul. That was his, <laughs> his specialization was actually very large. But he was specifically called for this. St. Mark was called to, to Egypt. Before that, he had a lot of preparation, including what we will see here. It wasn't <laughs> all very, like, exciting. Exciting. There were some different challenges, but it was all preparation for his main s service that he was separated for. What was he separated for? The Sea of Alexandria, which included all of Africa. Why did he go to Alexandria? Because he was going back to his hometown, which was in Libya. And even have his birthplace today. But to get to Libya, he's passed through Alexandria. So in his mind, I have to get to Libya, I have to get to Libya. But the focus ended up to be something in the middle along the way for everything else. Similar to St. John, that when he went, but I think in his mind, his focus was Ephesus. But there were a lot of other stops along the way, the seven cities, which was his area in Turkey. We will see it uh, in a little bit. Um, fasting and prayer is related, and it's mentioned here twice. <clears throat> the fasting and prayer, which was related to the preparation. And before, I don't know if we do this in servants' prep, it's a good <laughs> idea. For in the preparation, even before we start a new service and after we, we had started. And this is not just the people who are called, right? When it says um, they ministered to the Lord and fasted, it's all the apostles. It's all the apostles were fasting, even though Barnabas and Paul were the ones that are sent. Um, this is something we used to do, not, not just only in the apostles' fast, but even the servants in, in uh, the end of August or so, beginning of September, before we set the new service, we used to have in the servants, I don't know, in all the churches, but in some churches they would have a special fast just for this future uh, service in the year so that we can hear the voice of God and we, um, we take uh, the steps uh, properly. Um, and like I said, when there's the feeling of fulfillment, there's also the direction for separation. So when we feel that, okay, this service, it's going well, but there's a huge need here that it needs some work. And there are servants, like I said, one of the specialization is the pioneer to establish something new, challenging, difficult. It's much harder, right? And it's it's... It's a land that has not been, that, so it needs a lot of work. When someone starts sowing in a certain area and they plant, you know, the alpha, uh, alpha trees, like with, there's, it's one of the easier things to plant. But when they first prepare land, they can put that alpha uh, root or tree, whatever. They, alpha, alpha, I think they call it. What? No, alpha, alpha. It's it's a special, it's a special. Uh, like grass that after it goes then they can put any like they can put uh, mangoes or uh, strawberries whatever once it, it prepares the land it, it fertilizes it in a way and it, it prepares it for the next um, okay maybe I'll tell I don't know <laughs> uh, so being sent out by the Holy Spirit they went to Seleucia from there, they sailed to Cyprus. Then they went to Salamis and preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. Now, <clears throat> this, we're reminded again, again, that they're sent out by the Holy Spirit. And we'll just go through some of the cities. Seleucia is the largest, one of the largest port cities in the ancient world. It had about 6,000 inhabitants or more. And um, even to this day, like you can see how the shore is like very inviting. Um, it was the center of Greek civilization, and even it's believed that St. Thecla, do you know uh, Thecla, uh, we say in the Tazbaha, 
was one of the first martyrs, and they believed that she established a convent in this area. So there, it was very ripe for um, fruit, for even for establishing the church there. Um, it said that there were so many miracles from St. Thecla that although they had a lot of physicians, they almost went out of business in that area <laughs> because of the fruitful uh, the work. Um, and she was very uh, one of the very uh, popular uh, missionaries and evangelists in this area. Um, what happened? Okay. Uh, then, as you see here, they went from Seleucia across to uh, Paphos and then uh, uh, to Salamis. I don't know why it's, uh, there's a typo there. Um, so this is a, uh, another harbor. <laughs> they also had a synagogue there, and but it was the hometown of Barnabas. So again, they went, we told you the first time. So this was also, sometimes we start serving in our comfort zone. And this was a place that was familiar. He, he knew homes, he knew people there, he maybe had some family. And so this was the place where to start, not where to end. <laughs> some people, when they get challenged in the service, they go back to the comfort zone. But for, th for the disciples, it was, like I said, one of the, one of the starting points. And this is also where um, St. Uh, John, Mark, St. Mark, John Mark, started but it's also <laughs> where he kind of ended early. Uh, it's another, we can talk for an hour <laughs> on this, but we won't deal with that, that right now. Um, Paphos, uh, you see that in this island, they had a huge challenge. Um, they were known for being very lax. <laughs> in their morals and in their life. It seems a very comfortable and beautiful area. Um, and uh, there was also a lot of magic and sorcery that was there. We were just talking today how in the ancient world that this was, um, if, if they weren't very good Jews or Christians, most of the ancient world was involved in this magic and sorcery. And so the challenging thing for Christians to attack because why um, as mentioned in the book of revelation the devil will use a lot of his magic and sorcery to attract people and so they see physical things happening strange things and so they believed it very quickly so christianity one of the main um i think advantage or the the, the tool for the miracle work was to show them the true strength of god um, but it was, it, it was used for people who had weak faith. That's why the Lord says, right, blessed are those who believe without seeing. But when there was weak faith, the, these miracles were necessary in the establishment and in the start of the church. Um, okay. I want to go, let me jump to the different servants. Quick, I want to show some of the personalities. Why? Is, where did the mouse go? There it is. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Um, so go through different personalities. Saint Paul uh, <laughs> has a lot of support staff <laughs> and a lot of servants. That, were, that he depended a lot upon. And when we go in some detail on these servants, we not only see the challenges that were there, but with every challenge that God prepared uh, trustworthy and honorable servants to help. So especially when we're establishing a new service in a new region, God will also send, like we, like we mentioned, the calling of certain individuals. And these are mentioned very quickly in the... Uh, Pauline epistles, but I think it's it's good when we go in some detail. They give ins give us some type of inspiration. Um, so Tychicus, he's mentioned the book of Colossians. Uh, 
<coughs> that he was a Gentile from Asia Minor. Um, he was in a group of seven servants who traveled. He was uh, probably the second string <laughs> of servants. So when there was a difficulty, he was like just finished the servants prep. Uh, but he relieved Titus when uh, he could, uh, so he could join uh, St. Paul for, s for some time. Um, and uh, many times what St. Paul did, as you mentioned here, they, he would send certain servants to prepare the way, just like St. John the Baptist was sent to prepare the way, and we know he had one of the most difficult ministries in the six months that he served. How did they prepare? Just like before we came, you prepared the place. You have the food, and you have the tables, and you have the chairs, and you have, so that when we come, we, s we started right away. Um, and sometimes in the service, too, there's certain servants who are in this. Uh, they're able to level and prepare so that the fruit can come. Um, even sometimes, even in the Sunday school, you have the same. There are servants who prepared everything so that the conditions are ripe for uh, growth. Um, there are the pioneers also who can establish certain services, makes it much easier for those coming. Um, s I remember, like, say, in the time of uh, Coptic clubs or in conventions or whatever s services that we may have that continue for many years. The important thing, especially in the beginning, is how to put a very strong foundation, just like when you're doing any building. If the foundation is solid, it will last for many years. But if there are weaknesses in the beginning, like I'm not talking about just personal weakness, but even in principle or in approach, it can also, it will hopefully get better, <laughs> but usually <laughs> the situation is the opposite. Even if you look in some of the cities to that St. Paul had served, and some of the challenges that were there are still existing. Or say, if you look even in the generations, uh, like we talked of uh, Abraham, like Ishmael <laughs> and the sons of Ishmael, continued in the same direction till today, right? Where the sons of, son uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we know they continued, and it was out of this, was um, the Lord came, that's why they were called. So there are um, lessons that we learn uh, even in establishing the uh, new service. You know when we say in the silent prayer uh, of the priest as we're going around the altar, we say um, uh, that when, uh, before we say, Arise, O Lord God, that your enemies be scattered, let those who hate your name flee from before your face. <coughs> we, we actually pray for the servants that are going to come after us forever. We pray that God blesses our service, not just our service, but all the servants who are going to come after us, whether it be, say, you're teaching or you're serving in fifth grade. <laughs> We're not just praying for our service to be successful, but you're praying for all the generations of the servants that are going to come after us, not just in this age, even. So we continue now from the blessing of the servants who came before us for generations. And they were praying for us that we would not lose faith or lose our way, but that we remain steadfast. And at the same time, we are praying for the coming generations, not just the ones we see, but the ones that will, or over, until the end, however long, <laughs> however long uh, that will be. Um, and so uh, this is what we'll see in the generation of the services, servants that uh, St. Paul is sending. Uh, with Tychicus was Anisimus is one of my favorite. He's nobody really knows about him. He's one of the mysterious uh, servants. He was a slave, you know. He was converted in Rome. He had the problem um, that after when he was enslaved, uh, that when he was in prison with Saint Paul, and Saint Paul had to write a special letter so he would be uh, received. Um, Saint Paul calls him a faithful brother. And most probably, not only he was received by Philemon, 
but it's according to the tradition he became probably the first bishop after St. Timothy in Ephesus. Um, <clears throat> so that's why he said no longer treat, accept him, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother especially uh, to, beloved uh, to him. So it's an example for St. Paul how not only he discipled Onesimus, he had prepared for him so that in the future he wouldn't be rejected. Just like St. Timothy, he prepared him and he said, they're not going to accept you in the beginning. You'll face a lot of obstacles, but don't get discouraged because of your age or because of the circumstances, but to st be, remain steadfast. So he prepared him for challenges that were coming in the future. And when he saw that uh, Anisimus would face the challenge, he prepared so that he would be well-received. Uh, it's very long uh, vision. Uh, for him. Um, so he, Onesimus continued to serve uh, with St. Paul until his martyrdom uh, and uh, most probably ordained uh, even afterwards. Um, and he remained uh, preaching and baptizing uh, and was cruelly tortured uh, even in Rome. Uh, Aristarchus, <coughs> he was uh, also a servant uh, and a, pr a fellow prisoner was, was St. Paul, and he's called fellow worker. Um, so there's other Aristarchus. Um, he is one of the 70 or 72 apostles, um, and he was focused on serving the poor and helping the uh, serve the needy saints in Jerusalem. You'll notice that when we mention these gifts, they weren't all doing the same thing. St. Paul gathered many of the servants, and like I said, as he was specialized, he would help them to specialize in their service. Someone would say, well, I'm not sure what my specialty is. Okay, you were assigned at least first a certain service, but also when we uh, pray and fast and you hear the calling, then that it, there is a calling for specialty. It's different than someone says, I think I want to do this. <laughs> I think I want to do that. But they were, like I said, uh, called. He was also, um, so he was a Jewish believer, but he was very gifted in greeting people. That's why when St. Paul says greet each one by one and receive them. So he was one of those which we don't really have an official position in the church. In other Orthodox churches, and they have people whose service is to welcome the new people and they identify them. So part of the subdeacon uh, role was to be able to identify those people as, as they come, not only for security, but also for um, the sake of communion, because there are some people that couldn't take communion. Uh, one time we were visiting in one of the other Orthodox churches, and as we entered, they realized we're not, you know, you know it was a Eastern Orthodox, and we're Coptic. So they, they asked us, and then they sat us in a certain place. So the priest would know during the liturgy, they're not going to take communion, they're not from our church, and then they send, I don't know how, to the priest by the end, so they know where we are from. It's different. We don't have uh, as a good, I don't, we need to work a little bit on that system. So even in communion, one time I was giving communion, and uh, a deacon told me I, I didn't recognize this person before. So I had to ask. I was, uh, I'm, I'm new in this church. It wasn't in our diocese. Um, so someone who knows the congregation and able to help. And turns out, yes, they were Coptic. So we had to have a discussion, so we give them communion. Even though we fixed it, they were very offended because <laughs> he doesn't look. So what the subdeacon role um, or the servants, the greeters, is to help so that the ones who's approaching, they're prepared to approach. And if someone who is willing, so is also notified so that it doesn't happen for the body and blood. Like there's, there's a, if there's a discussion, there needs to be, someone is not sure, is this church, they take communion, they're, they're trained, they know. So if someone tells you they're from the Church of Jerusalem, which is common, it's new, newer now in the area, do you know, the Orthodox Church of Jerusalem. Do they give them, someone sent me a message the other day, you give them communion, you don't give them communion. So if you're not sure, you check. You say, no, it's Eastern Orthodox. 
so they don't take communion. <clears throat> but if it's from the Syrian church, make sure it's Syrian and not Assyrian. Sometimes they trick. <laughs> and they say, it happened to one of the priests. They wanted to make it sound like, because if it's Syrian church, they'll take communion. Assyrian church, they can't take communion in any Orthodox church. Because, um, yeah, long story. And so, But how they say it, <laughs> you have to be alert. So the idea is, <coughs> idea is how that we have this uh, type of service to welcome and to uh, address. Um, I was giving this a couple of years ago just for St. Mark, but briefly, um, the St. Mark's role in the service, this was like his preparation that God had sent him in that first missionary journey. Uh, why did he leave? Again, like I said, we could talk about for an hour or so. But he was young. He was probably a little scared. And he wasn't as prepared. And so it was too much for him. So why there was a contention that became so sharp between St. Paul and St. Barnabas. So St. Paul would say, you know, he's not ready. St. Barnabas says, he will be ready. St. Paul says, I can't take that responsibility. Barnabas says, I can he says, you're his uncle. <laughs> he said, that's why I got <laughs> this one. So they couldn't agree. So what ended up happening, it, it was um, another separation. This separation is different from, in chapter 15, is different than the one in chapter 13. The separation from chapter 13 was the calling for a specific new service. In chapter 15, it was God's way to uh, arrange the service so there's actually a growth in the service. We only know because St. Luke joined in chapter 16 what are the events of St. Paul. We didn't really hear what happens with St. Barnabas and St. Mark. Later on, we definitely hear when St. Mark returns and we experience uh, from Saint, uh, that lesson. Um, <clears throat> and we know that it wasn't a personal issue because later on, St. Paul says, bring to me uh, St. Mark, John Mark, because he's useful for my ministry. So it, it didn't, he didn't uh, hold a grudge, anything, but he recognized, he, this is by the, one of his last epistle, right? And say it to, he said, now he's, he's useful, because he became very, uh, very mature and very experienced. And he was... Uh, blessed to have St. Barnabas. I didn't include Barnabas, <coughs> but St. Barnabas, he is the son of encouragement. And prob also what we need, those servants who are gifted to identify the gifts of others. Not only to identify them, but to bring them to fruition. So St. Barnabas, he could recognize the grace in St. Paul when the other apostles were going to reject him. Barnabas took, encouraged, he prepared him, and he was with him for several chapters, <laughs> the first uh, stage. Um, <clears throat> and also for St. Mark, when St. Paul says, no, 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 we can't do this, <laughs> it's not going to work, St. Barnabas makes it work through the grace. So he has that gift, he's able to work with anyone, and to build them. St. Paul says, I don't have time. <laughs> like he will call. And his work, he said, he's always in the front line. He was always in the danger. So there's no time for uh, to pat someone on the back. <laughs> he, he's, he's running. So he needs someone to run after him and go ahead of him. Uh, but St. Barnabas is the one who's working behind building and encouraging and supporting. So we need all of the gifts. But the idea is, we had one of the servants... Uh, his gift, he doesn't like to give a talk, he doesn't give Bible studies into it, but he could bring anyone to the church. So as soon as we tell him, so and so, he doesn't come. Can you bring him? Next week he's in the church. Uh, anyone. And we used to even we used to do it as a challenge. It was with one of the other servants. He said, Oh, can you bring so and so? Whatever it's sure, no problem. <laughs> because he's he's very simple, very humble, he, and he, he loves. Well, he can bring anyone. His that was his gift, that was his talent. And if we had more of those, our our uh, service will be completely different. 
because it's not just for the cops like this gift he is a, a magnet for the others so the idea is that each one of us when you look and and take uh, like saint basil said the pollen from every flower so when you are reading through the book of acts you can see the gift in all of the uh, the people who served with St. Paul. And some of them are very quiet, like you have to search and search and search to find one or two things about them. But in that journey, in the search, you discover also about our service and also to help to identify the service or the gifts in others. Because when you are serving in the, in the Sunday school or in the youth meeting or whatever, uh, it's the same thing. You have maybe uh, 20 or so, 15, 20 of the children and to see where they are and how to grow them. And they're all different. Uh, one time when we were serving, one of the priests uh, told us each one of them has a trouble, has a challenge. And I was looking and said, they're all good. We start to visit them. We start to realize, oh, there's this problem and this problem and this problem. So they, there are some things we didn't see. And at the same time, there are gifts, like some of them that you're serving. I mean, they told us uh, in the Sunday school, they said some that you are serving will be priests, and some will be bishops, and some will be nuns, and some will be saints. Some are already saints, and some will pass early. So the time is short. We don't have 10, 20 years. And some, they have a long way of suffering. So what we are doing in the service, how to prepare each one, and it needs a very clear grace so that God gives us the blessing to serve each one so they grow from glory to glory. Glory be to now and ever into the age of all the ages. I was thinking the other day, I don't know what is the comfort zone. <laughs> so if there, is, if there is the comfort zone, then the, there's something usually wrong. <laughs> so the sacrifice, the, the service um, is usually <clears throat> one sacrifice after the other. And the one, the service especially that we don't want to do, we end up <laughs> focused in there. Until we enjoy it, and then we f see the fruit, and then we see the fulfillment, and then we're called to go to the next one <laughs> that we also we wanted to stay here. So the servant learns from the beginning how to uh, erase or ignore or delay, postpone my judgment for the service. Like I remember once I was in a new city, it was sent, and so I said, okay, I'm going to focus. I went to graduate school. I'm going to focus on my studies. So I came back to uh, talk to Abuna. And when I said, what service did they give you? So I said, no, there's, no, <laughs> there's no service. I'm focused on it. He said, no, go tell Abuna that I said you must serve. <laughs> of course, I didn't want to tell Abuna. <laughs> it was very embarrassing. Uh, so I kind of mentioned, by the way, Abuna said. <laughs> so... Get an assignment. I, I got. I, I want to put me. I think it was in first grade, second grade. So I said I never served first and second grade. I don't know how to put serve in second grade. I think I stayed five minutes. But, and then afterwards, I'm I'm tr starting to learn. I asked the servant, how do, you, "How do you serve first grade and second grade?" Because <laughs> before that, it was it was the older. We were assigned the older. Five minutes, and then they said, "No, no." When I said, "Go to." I forget what it was sixth, seventh grade. I don't remember what, what grade. In five minutes, I said after five minutes, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> I was just starting to enjoy, because <laughs> I, I didn't even have to give the lesson. But the idea is, when you leave your le self for God to arrange and God to call, it's completely different. If you try to do it on your own, be careful, and we warn the other people around you, <laughs> because it doesn't, it doesn't work. We don't have. Um, so you could maneuver and you could adjust your service to a certain degree. But in the end, 
it, it won't it will be completely different than when you leave God to go and when you feel too comfortable that's when you pray the dangerous prayer that says God um, whatever you want me to do or whatever you want me to leave everyone I'm, I'm willing and that's where the the burning bush and the other thing <laughs> where you, you get a calling to a challenging service um, and that's what we also experience as you know in the grace of God you know a hundred years hundred five years or maybe hundred and four maybe the new idea of Sunday school came <laughs> so the Sunday school is only that old before that we didn't have Sunday school what we did it was very different um, so what I want to say is there's many other services. Yes, it's good to focus on the sky, but I think we also reached a level where there's a lot of other services that we need in the church to build and to grow, and that needs some of the extra effort, extra work. So I'll give you grace to identify, the, to hear the call and to uh, focus in that. Because even, like I say, some of the classes we have, how many s servants you have for a class? Two to five. Two to five. I was thinking five. Because we, we never had permission. Uh, we have the, the, what's it called? The um, uh, experience to have like four or five. It was usually one or two. Barely we were struggling to find when we were serving. Um, and I was thinking that God sent one or two for a city. <laughs> so we have the luxury, which is very good, to have five for, for a class. And it's not just, let's say, if you're in first grade. It's not just the first grade that are in your class. They used to take the first or second grade in the city. So even the non-Christians, the non-Orthodox. So part of our, if it's five, maybe one or two can think and say, well, how do we, what do we do for those who are also in the area that are not? I know uh, one of the high school servants, so during the time of um, like certain events, whether they have homecoming or prom, whatever, they have a certain service for the, in the high school so that they could have some outreach with those, if they're serving 10th grade, with the 10th graders in the high school. Again, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not comfortable. And you ask me how to do it, I'll tell you, uh, we, we have some idea. But if God calls us to do those things, and it could be tutoring, could, there's many other ways. But I think in, in this age, we have a calling for a lot of those new ministries that need work. Um, because at some point, we do feel the responsibility to reach in, in all levels. And I think there's... there's um, there's a lot of work, and so the laborers <laughs> are few, always. Maybe the, the servants could be many, but the laborers <laughs> are few. So. Yes. So that's very good. Uh, someone was asking me this question uh, a while back. I remember what we were, uh, we were had a certain project a number of years ago when we were in DC, which was uh, like a servant prep, but it was for, um, I think we were taking fourth to sixth grade, something like that. Junior high only? S yeah, sixth grade? Because so by the time they got to high school, they were ready. They already had what we have for servants prep. In addition, so it was a separate day. The idea behind it was not just that we give them the material, but actually they felt the responsibility in order that they are going to serve. And uh, they had it was a very good program at the time, very creative um, to to give them you know assignments. It's kind of like, uh, and it was selected. So at the same time, they would, uh, so that by the time they get to the high, s high school, they're able. You can put them in some of the classes. You, um, and, and I think that that training, or even the, the, 
like the discipling is can be very young, very young age. Um, because there are some, especially some of the kids now, they can take what we used to say put in the curriculum for eighth grade, you can put in sixth grade. And there's some from fourth grade they can take. Like I'm very when I with the children now impressed how much they can absorb at very young age. And it seems it's this like uh, grace from God because th we, there is going to be a lot more work <laughs> uh, that we have. So uh, if if we don't give them what they can uh, absorb now, I mean, we, we God will find someone <laughs> to to fill them because th they're they're very bl the some very blessed youth that are coming. So you fill fill them. <laughs> Sayyidina, for, for the blessing, even though it was last minute. Um, and Sayyidina just flew in yesterday, and he was willing to, to give us a blessing for the, the first in-person meeting, I guess, the year, hopefully not the last one. Um, thank you for all coming, and I hope um, this is going to be a new beginning and a fresh start for, for all of us this coming year. Um, we don't have any uh, main announcements. For after we finish, we'll, we'll have the Agabi meal. Um, but... Uh, uh, Abuna Daniel just wanted to remind uh, some of the servants, especially of the elementary, to keep in contact with the parents, especially regarding the controversial issues. Um, and some parents are getting nervous, um, and they they communicate the issues to us. And I guess we just need to um, keep them in the loop in terms of when we plan to address those issues. Um, do we have a plan for open house um, October 23rd? Okay. Um, yes, that's right. Um, I remember now. So maybe those are some of the things that we can address. I know this year we're going to do it slightly differently. Um, I believe they're not going to jump from class to class as before, correct? Um, but that's what I understood. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but we still need you to prepare uh, issues and um, things to present to the parents, even if you're not going to have a full-blown um, talk with them face-to-face -face for, for an hour or so. So um, that's one issue. Any other questions or issues or administrative announcements? I can't think of anything else. Hmm? Thank you.